Welcome to iLecture Online. For our second example, we have two differences. First of all, notice that our inductors are now connected differently so that we have the polarity in opposite sides of the inductor. And in addition, our voltage supply here has a phase angle. So that plays a bit of a role in how we're going to adjust to our new model. But first, what we need to do, you can see they've already drawn most of the new model where I tried to model the mutual inductance between the two inductors in terms of the voltages that they produce, the induced voltages in the other circuits. The only thing I haven't put down yet is the direction, of course, because the polarity now is different. We need to understand what we need to do with the direction of the induced voltage. If the polarity is the same, then the direction of the induced voltage and the direction of the induced current will be opposite to the direction of the current in the other circuit. So you see that I2 is in this direction, you'd expect the induced voltage to be in this direction in the other circuit. But because they're connected in, in opposite polarity like this, that means that reverses the direction, that means that the induced voltage will be in the same direction as the current here, the induced current will be in the same direction as the current over here, so end up with a plus here and a minus here. And also in this circuit with induced voltage, it will be in the same direction as this current, it will be down, I1 is down over here, therefore, through this inductor of course, therefore the induced voltage will be in this direction as well, plus and minus, so that's how we determine the direction of the induced voltages. Now we're ready to draw the Kirchhoff voltage loops for, for loop 1 and loop 2. So let's start with loop 1. Uh, KVL1 for loop 1 is going to be, starting over here, we have a 200 volt gain at a 45 degree phase angle. So 200 at a 45 degree phase angle, can't forget about that. And that's the difference here, that we have to carry this phase angle with us. Now we have a voltage drop because we go in the same direction as the current. That would be minus 4 I1, a voltage drop across the inductor, minus J8 times I1. And then a voltage drop because we go from the plus to the minus on the induced voltage. That would be a minus J1 I2, J1 I2, and that adds up, whoa, whoa. Got a problem here. J1 I2. All right, and that all adds up to zero. So there's our equation. Now notice we're going to have another equation over here, and we're going to have to solve one of them for I2 in terms of I1. So let's see here. Um, hmm. Why don't we solve this one for I2 in terms of I1? So we can do that. Let's move this to the other side. So this becomes J I2, when I move this to the other side it becomes positive, I don't have to write the 1, and that equals over here 200 with a phase angle of 45 degrees, and then here I have a, a minus, that would be a 4, uh, let's see here, I think I like it this way better, keep it separate for now. So we have a, um, a minus 4 I1 and a minus J8 I1. So notice if I now divide both sides by a J, divide this 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 by a J, that's why I like to keep it separate, makes it easier to simplify things. So we have I2, because the J's cancel out, equals, here I multiply the top and the bottom by J, J times J gives us a negative, negative J200 with a 45 degree phase angle. So negative J200 with a 45 degree phase angle. Just keep bringing this phase angle along, then later on we'll deal with it. Here also I'm going to multiply top and bottom by J. So negative 1 times the negative becomes positive, so plus J4I1. The J's cancel out here, minus 8I1. And so finally, what I can then write is that I2 is equal to, bringing this up, I could write this as J4 minus 8 times I1 minus J200 with a 45 degree phase angle. And now I have my first equation where I2 is in terms of I1. Now all I have to do is get another equation for the second loop, solve that for I1, 
and then I can plug that in here, and then I can solve for I2. Once I have a I2, then I can calculate the voltage across the, the voltage drop across the resistor, because then the voltage is simply the resistance times the current. Okay, ready for KVL2. Kirchhoff voltage loop 2, we add up all the voltages, so we start from here to here, we have a voltage drop because the voltage polarity is in the opposite direction, so I have a minus J1 times I1. Here we have a voltage drop because we go in the same direction as the current, minus J5 times I2, and here we have a voltage drop minus the resistance 10 times I2, and all that adds up to zero. So what I should do here is solve for I1 in terms of I2, and then I can substitute that in here, and I can solve for I2. All right, let's do that. So let's see here. Move this to the other side and turn the equation around. End up with uh, J times I1 is equal to, because when I'm bringing it across, it becomes positive. I can drop the 1 here, and that equals a minus J5 I2 and a minus 10 I2. Then I divide both sides by J, like this. So I end up with I1 is equal to J divided by J. It gives me minus 5 I2. And here I'm going to multiply both the top and the bottom by J. So J times J is a negative 1. That makes that a plus plus 10 or plus J10 times I2 and then factoring out an I2 I can say that I1 is equal to uh, minus 5 plus J10 times I2 and there's my second equation then all I have to do is plug that into my I1 over here and I'm set to go I can then find I2 and then I can find the voltage I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and do that. We have I2 is equal to um, J, let's see here, minus 8 plus J4 times I1, which is equal to minus 5 plus J10 times I2. I'm kind of running out of room here, so let me put a line here. And then I have to subtract from that minus J200 with a phase angle of 45 degrees. All right, kind of have to squeeze that in there. So I'm going to multiply this out. So we have I2 is equal to minus 8 times 5, minus 5 is a plus 40. Minus 8 times that, that's minus 80. Minus 20, that would be minus J100. And J times J is negative 1. 4 times 10 is, uh, let's see here, that's 40. That's minus 40, minus 40. And multiply that times I2, minus J200 with a 45 degree phase angle. All right. Notice 40 minus 40 is 0. So we now we say that I2 is equal to minus J100 times I2 because the 40s cancel out, minus J200 with a phase angle of 45 degrees. Ah, we're getting there. Now move this over here. We get I2 times 1 plus J100 is equal to a negative J200. Now notice a negative J, J is an, is an angle of minus 90 degrees, so we can say that as 200, so I keep the negative sign, so I have 200, with a phase angle of, um, that would be, um, well, actually, if I go minus J, I, I can make this a plus, plus 200, with a minus 90 degrees, plus 45 degrees. Let's do it like that. All right. So notice, a minus J is a minus 90 degrees, and I add 45 degrees to that. And that makes that into a plus. All right. So far, so good. And finally, I have I2 is equal to minus 9 to plus 45 is minus 45. So I have 200 with a phase angle of minus 45 degrees divided by 1 plus J100. Hmm, 1 plus J100. Well, that sounds like it's about 100. 
and it's a plus j, that would be an angle of about 90 degrees, very close to 90 degrees, close enough, right? Because it's j101, so it's basically 100 with an angle of 90 degrees, that we can almost ignore the one, just basically the same thing, which means that this is equal to two with a phase angle of minus 135 degrees. So here, I have the value for I2. Now all I have to do is multiply I2 times the resistance to get the voltage. Remember, I is equal to V over R, which means that V is equal to I times R, and therefore V is equal to the current I, which would be I2 in this case, so that's going to be I2 times R in this particular case. So I2, which is 2 with a phase angle of 100, uh, not 100, minus 135 degrees, minus 135 degrees, and I'm going to multiply that times 10 with a phase angle of 0 degrees, and so the voltage is going to be equal to 20 with a phase angle of minus 135 degrees. And that would be, of course, in terms of volts. And again, it depends how you want to look at it, because notice the current is in this direction. We have a voltage drop from there to there. So the voltage from here to here is going to be a positive 20 volts, because we have a voltage drop of 20 volts from there to there. So again, sign-wise, it depends how you want to look at it. And that's then the final result, and this is how you do that. That's how it's done. Twelve minutes, seriously? These are double E problems. Twelve minutes? It's done correctly. That's just shock. <laughs>